Hey everyone, Aja here from Pandemonium. Today's gonna be about appliances and can you have too many in an RV? Hmm. Let me know down in the comments below. <laughs> really? <laughs> Tell me about it. We finally got to a rest area where there was parking before the dump station. The last rest area we came to with the dump station and potable water, there was, um, it was right there as soon as you entered and I didn't have a chance to park, get some clothes done. And that's actually what I'm gonna do today is wash a load or two of clothes and then dump my tanks and then fill up on water. Just wanna say this is not a paid promotion. I've had this washer for several years. I bought it off of eBay. It's the Cup It brand and it holds a good amount of clothes, which I'm gonna do. Maybe that's a little too full. Let's take some of that out. It uses about 17 gallons on quick wash. So I have to be careful because that's a lot of water, especially when you're traveling. That's why since we're by potable water, I decided to go ahead and do a load. Or two, but I have to get the hose so I can hook it up. Okay. There's the hose. When I'm back at home, I use biodegradable soaps so I can put it on the plants, reuse the gray water, but I don't necessarily need to do that when I'm on the road since I'm dumping my water at a dump facility. And I find that I have to use this 45 degree elbow here. If I don't, there's too much of an awkward bend here that it puts a strain on this and this tends to want to leak. So it doesn't do that when I have this on there. Okay, I'm gonna show you my setup. This is the drain hose here. And then here is the inlet hose. I have a splitter here and there's just a button in the back there. I just press that button and then it diverts it from this into this hose. That way when I'm filling this up, I don't have to hand fill it. it just comes from my tanks and the pump. I always keep these bands on here so I know which one is the hot water. It's hard to read these, especially if it's dark. So this is the cold. I'm gonna cut it on, make sure there's no leaks. Okay, the hose is pressurizing. There's no leaks on this end. Oh, of course, we got a small leak on this end. I haven't used this in a while. So, oh, you know, actually, I don't think there's a rubber grommet in there. I'm gonna have to put that rubber grommet in there. That's what's going on. Let's turn that off. Oh, that wasn't good. I didn't know the shower was on. I know, I yay. It's really hard to connect that, but luckily I had another elbow lying around. The problem is, is this doesn't spin, so it's hard to get the hose on there. So I added this elbow, plus it's not an awkward position, like this side here. And this little thing rotates, so now I can get the hose on much easier. Let's check and see if it leaks. Let's see. All right, it's got to repressurize. Where is it leaking? So I think it's actually this. Maybe I need to take this off and put some more tape on it. I left all my Teflon tape back at RV Base Camp. But luckily Jeff had some on hand and I took this off. There was barely any on there. So I put extra on and now it's not leaking. Awesome. You can tell I've never used this before because it took me a minute to get everything situated. There's a plug conveniently behind my TV, so that's where I have it plugged in. And let's see if it works. Perfect. Okay, so we want to do quick, which is three. And then we'll use about seven liters instead of eight. I think that'll be fine. Right, there it goes. Awesome! First time I've used this in here. Amazing! gonna be a game changer when I'm actually somewhere I can use this instead of having to lug all my clothes to the laundry mat. Now when we're in travel mode and I'm going from place to place it is much easier to just go to the laundry mat because I can drive my rig to it. But if I'm back at home or a friend or family's house or actually just boondocking where I have access to water then that'll work too but it's nice to have this. Oh I think it just finished filling up. Put it on eight. There we go. It's not quite filled up. I think eight is the most you can use on this. Eight is the highest level of the water. There we go, that's better. 
This is actually really good at wringing it out. It wrings it out pretty dry. It's the washing machine I used at RV Base Camp. Mm, let that finish washing. So back at home, after it's done, I would just hang the clothes up on a clothesline and let them air dry. But since I'm at a rest area, I don't have that option, but I do have a dryer. And you might see something else next to that. I'll show that later. Ew, dirty. So it is draining. Since it's my first time using it, I'm gonna keep an eye on this because I don't want it to overflow the base in here. If not, I would have to cut the power off and let that drain. Mm, looks like it's working though. Alright, it's on spin mode. I'll go ahead and close this. Yeah, it seems like the size of the basin can definitely keep up with the washing machine. So that's good. I just didn't want it to overflow because that would be a mess. And it's on spin cycle and it's not shaking anything about. So that's a good sign. Still doing good and draining. The shower does drain kind of slow. All right, I'm gonna let this finish and I'll come back in a minute. Okay, I think it's almost done with spin and it's gonna start on rinse and it's empty. Well, I'm gonna have to clean this out. It's kind of dirty. Dirty clothes, dirty. So it just went through its first rinse cycle and it is draining. It's doing pretty good at the draining job, especially between cycles. I might actually change this about and make this permanent where I drill a hole probably in the metal over there and then make the drain permanent into here and also make a permanent hose thing or where it's not just coming out of the door because this is, I don't, I don't particularly care for that. I mean, it works, but it's not the best situation. I would definitely like it better if everything was tucked away. All right, that load is done. Awesome. That's why I like this washing machine. It leaves it pretty dry. So now they just have to go into the dryer. There are two settings that I like on the dryer. I have it set on smart that just detects when the clothes get dry. And then there's also quick, which just usually gets the clothes dry enough and then I can just hang them wherever been cloudy for several days so my batteries are a bit low I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the generator because it's using about a hundred amps I do have that vent open and the dryers going again finished washing all my clothes and dried one load I have a couple more loads to dry but I want to go ahead and get my tanks drained I compost so this is gray water that I'm just dealing with but I still do wash my hands I'm gonna finish up here and then we're gonna hit the road and go to the next town, which is probably about 50 minutes away. And I'll also add water to my fresh tanks. Back on the road. This part of Texas definitely has some steep grades. This one's 7% after Kerrville. So I was wrong. The next town that we're going to is only about 30 miles away. We've made it into Bourne. Population 22,000. I think we're going to be going through the historic district up here. We only have about three miles till our stopping point. 62 degrees, it's almost three o'clock. Starting to get late. It does look like older buildings. Well, maybe not so much. There's a visitor center. I think it's pronounced born. Looks like that, but. Take the next left onto East Blanco Road. Doesn't look like a, an older part of town. Oh, nice. Little sweet park there. Oh, cool, yeah. Older buildings. Nice. Continue on East Blanco Road for one mile. One more mile. Still a little, huh? Just got a little bit more to go. I did another load in the dryer. 
uh, nice and dry. Ooh, these are hot. Nice and dry. So I'll leave those because we're working on something. Jeff came over because we are going to install this. I had thought to put it into the cabinet, just insert it in there. And I might still do that at a later time. But in order to do that, I have to cut this bar out here. I already took off the door. Then I have to step the pipes back about a foot or eight inches and that's a lot of work when i can just put it up on this cabinet here then i can put the drain right into the sink and then there's already this hose here that we can adapt and uh, we can put the regular water hose through here so it just seems like this is a better placement so the only thing i have to do for this placement is uh remove this shelf or either lift the shelf up higher before we permanently mount it, not that it's that big of an issue because all I'm doing is taking a shelf out, but I will have to modify this hose, the spray hose that I never use the sprayer. So we're going to modify that so it goes into here. But anyways, we want to use this first to make sure that it will work and that we actually like it. It only uses a gallon and a half of water. So we're going to go, I'm going to just put a few dishes in and then we'll put the pod down here and i think what it does is it recirculates the water so that way once the soap dissolves it'll reuse the water time and time again and then once it goes into rinse cycle then it drains everything and then uh, uses fresh water so it says it's not necessary to rinse off the dishes which is nice but no big chunks which just checking the cycles c1 is normal Two is baby care. I guess that means gentle. And then three is glass. Huh, cool. And then four is rapid. So I guess that's quick wash. And then, oh, they have one for fruit? That's weird. So they have C5, which is for fruit. Huh, that's pretty cool, I guess. Since we don't have the water hooked up yet, I'm just going to fill it up with this hose manually. So we want to do C4 for quick or rapid. Hit start and it's going to take about 40 minutes. We'll check back in a few moments just to see how it's going. I heard it filling up a chamber so I think there is actually a reservoir just specifically for wash. That way it doesn't use all the water and it can recycle it. Jeff was yeah. saying that the normal cycle the only difference is is it has a drying cycle at the end, a heated drying cycle. Right, which and uses a that, lot more power. Well, because obviously. it goes for about an hour. Oh, an hour? Yeah, the, the quick cycle or the wash part of the normal cycle only goes for a little over half an hour, but then there's like an hour drying time if you do the normal. Right, and where with the quick, it just air dries. Right. So I probably will choose that option. It's just like my washing machine. I do the quick because it uses less water. Right now it's saying it's using 700 watts, a little over. And that is about 60 amps right under. This also does heat up the water. Well, that, so we had the light cut off in there. What if you just hit, can, if you hit power, does, oh, there it goes, okay. There are ways to oh, well, I mean, it looks like it's doing a really good job. And the yeah, soap isn't water. completely, yeah, the, it's not completely um, done or dissolved. See the top. Oh yeah, the utensils are getting washed. Wash cycle, which does the same but doesn't use as high a temperature. Okay. And then there's a baby care that uses higher temperatures. Oh, <laughs> higher temperature. Okay. Oh, that is that like for sanitizing? Because yeah. it does have a yeah, UV it's a filter, steam, right? Uh, it's a steam adding. Yeah, it does have a UV. I, I think you have to turn on the. I don't know whether the UV comes on by default. I guess that's not bad. 700 watts, but it might use uh, like yeah. up to uh, like. 12 or 15 in dry cycle. Oh yeah, well, it may, yeah. But I mean, I have I a 3,000 watt inverter, so it should be fine. I think 700 watts is when the heating element is on. Right. But I don't think the heating element stays on. It just goes up to until the water's a certain temperature, then it'll cut off. And then, and then it just recycles then it. it. Then it goes down as only you know, half as much water. Well, I like it so far. I mean, it's definitely much easier than hand washing, and I, I use a a lot more than a gallon and a half when I'm washing dishes usually. People said mostly about it, it saves water. Uh -huh. And, you know, for a lot of people, they put everything in at night uh -huh. and then set it when they want it to run and they go to sleep. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, and then and it's, it's done, in, done the in the morning. I mean, in my opinion, it really doesn't take that long because it's only a 40 minute cycle. 
I just wanted to check really quickly, but once it is done heating up the water and it's just doing its normal wash, it only uses about 50 watts, so not much at all. And I think it says um, only four, about four and a half amps. Okay, I think it's in the drain mode. So it should rinse after this. Nice. This goes right into the sink. Bye bye, dirty water. Okay, it worked out well. Nice. All clean. I was actually worried because, you know, back at home we had a washing machine and we had to rinse the dishes off and then stick them in here. And I was always thinking, what's the point in that? Where this one, I didn't have to rinse anything at all. It worked out perfectly. I removed the top shelf and it's actually perfect. The framing is actually above where this is going to be. So I just have to put a new board here and then put the old kind of fascia back on. It's going to work out perfect. Since I'm talking about appliances, I want to give you a few more updates. My Medea AC is working amazingly. I love this thing and... Sometimes if it's hot at night, I will sleep with it on. It doesn't use as much power. The reason why this unit is so efficient and quiet is because it's an inverted unit. I did a whole video about that. If I can find it, I'll link it at the end of this video. Update on my Mr. Heater and this thing is working amazingly. Someone had commented that it would probably go through a lot of propane, but I don't find that to be true at all. It's actually very efficient. Because with my other one, I would forget to cut it off and it would just get really hot in here. This one has a thermostat, so it cuts, once it gets the temperature, it cuts off. So it's very efficient that way. I don't have to mess with it, no fuss. And I don't find that it uses that much propane. So my thought process on why this doesn't use as much propane as my smaller buddy heater. My small buddy heater seemed to struggle and keep up when it got really cold. This does not do that at all. That's why I think it's more efficient because it's a bigger unit. It just doesn't have to work as hard. So yes, this thing has been amazing. And another thing is that it does have the fan, which I think helps. Another appliance I think is amazing is my induction cooktop because it saves on gas. I do still have the gas burner underneath. I just put this wood piece on top so I can use the induction. I don't ever use this anymore. I always use my induction cooker because I have solar which is free energy and that's better than paying for the gas. This has been working amazingly. I just did another load of dishes and I got the shelf reinstalled. Looks like it has never been removed. Since I don't use my gas stove or oven, you might be wondering what I use as an oven. And I have this air fryer here. It's not only an air fryer, but it does multiple things. It's a dehydrator, air fryer, convection oven, it does it all. So it's been really handy. And like I said, it doesn't use gas, which costs me money. I do love these double doors. It fits nicely in the cabinet. I just shut it up when I'm not using it. I do plug it in right here. Other than my heater, which has its own tank, the only other appliance I use on propane, and this uses the onboard tank, is my refrigerator. And I do eventually want to replace this with a 12 volt DC fridge, but that'll be later down the road. Right now, this one's working just fine. So I see no need to replace it. Plus, DC refrigerators can get pretty expensive, especially the units that fit right in. I do have this 12-volt refrigerator, but it's not in use or plugged in right now. I might actually do something, if I get another one of these, do two of them, and then replace that with my refrigerator. I'm not sure yet. Um, I do use this when I'm back on the property to go get stuff from town, because town is 30 minutes, and that's if I go to Williams or an hour away if I go to Flagstaff. So this comes in handy for that, for being portable. So I don't know. I just might get the unit that fits directly in here. I guess this is appliance too. My other TV kind of crapped out on me. One side of the screen or kind of a quarter of the screen started going out. So I went ahead and replaced it and got a little larger TV. It works on Google Home, but I'll go over that in a different video because that's a video in itself. I want to thank y'all for hanging out. I think I covered all the appliances, but yeah. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I actually love all the appliances, and if it makes life easier, then I say go for it. But I'm going to go ahead and end the video here, and hopefully we'll see you in the next one, where we'll end up somewhere. Are you comfy cozy, Mumu? Want to tell everybody bye-bye? <laughs> bye, y'all. See you next time.